Hello, my friends. This is Evangelist Ryan Sutton. I want to talk to you today about a subject that many of us have had to deal with, the death of a dream. Really, I want to talk to you about what to do when your dreams die. I know that many times when, when we have hope and, and desire and vision about a particular area of our life or something that we want to see happen, and then it doesn't work out the way that we want it to, or it seems like that dream just totally withers away and crashes and burns, uh, there can be feelings of extreme discouragement, heaviness, pressure, uh, depression, and I would even say despair. Sometimes there are feelings of hopelessness. But I want us to take a lesson from the great man of God, David, today. I love David so much outside of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's my favorite character in all the Bible. I love David because God said about David, he's a man after my own heart. And I love David because he's such a real person. David was not a perfect man. Anybody that knows anything about David knows that he wasn't a perfect man. David was a murderer. David was an adulterer. He made tremendous mistakes throughout the course of his life and his ministry and, and throughout the course of his reign as the king of Israel, but God loved David, and David's heart was right before the Lord. The Lord said through the prophet Samuel, the Lord spoke to Samuel and said, men judge by the outward appearance, but I'm looking at the heart. That's what God told Samuel whenever he went to anoint David king over Israel, and I'm not going to take time to read it. I would challenge you to read 2 Samuel chapter 12 today, uh, the story about David after he had committed adultery with a woman named Bathsheba and he was responsible for the death of her husband Uriah, the Bible says that Bathsheba conceived a son out of that adulterous affair with King David and David tried to cover it up. He tried to hide the thing and uh, she was pregnant and so after David was responsible for Uriah's death, her husband, David moved her into the palace and took her as his own wife and it seemed at first like David had gotten away with it and that there were going to be no repercussions for what he had done. But then Nathan the prophet came to David and spoke a parable to him and literally pointed his finger in David's face and said, David, you are the man. You're the one who's made this tremendous mistake. You're the one who's done this, this evil in the sight of the Lord. And God says to you that because of this thing that you've done, the, the, the baby, the child that Bathsheba has conceived, the son that is growing within her womb shall not live but it shall die. And as you can imagine, those, those were words that any parent would dread to hear. David's heart was stricken with extreme pain and grief. The Bible says that, that Bathsheba went on and then she gave birth to the child and he was very sickly. And the Bible says that David got on his face before God. He put on sackcloth and ashes and humbled himself and repented. That's one of the things that made David such a great man of God. He always repented quickly when he made a mistake and fell short and grieved the heart of God. And so David got on his face and he cried out for mercy and pled with the Lord that, that the Lord would allow the child to live. But then after all his fasting and all his praying and seeking the face of God, what God said would happen, happened. And David's baby boy died. I want to tell you, you can. You, I can't even imagine. I can't even uh, imagine the pain, the grief that was in his heart and that was in Bathsheba's heart. I believe that there's no pain like the pain of losing a child. But you know what I love about David? David's response to this great tragedy. This was the worst day of David's life. It was the worst thing that he had ever dealt with at that moment in his life, the loss of his precious baby boy. And you know what David did? Did he say, I have hate God. I blame God. I'm not going to serve God anymore. How could he do this to me? No, that's not what David did at all. When David said, the Bible says that the servants, if you read it in 2 Samuel chapter 12, the Bible says that the servants were fearful to tell David that the child had died because they thought to themselves, he's been so, so stricken with grief and hurt and pain as the child's been sick. Who knows what he'll do when he finds out that the child is dead. But you know what David did when he heard that the child was dead? It says he arose from from the earth. I want to tell you, my friend, maybe you're dealing with the death of a dream right now. Some dream. I, I don't know what it is, but a dream that you've had for your life has been totally and completely shattered in a million pieces. Your dream seems dead and lifeless, and you feel like there's nothing that can be done. I want to tell you the first thing you need to do today is get up from where you're at right now. I've been saying it a lot on videos that we've been recording in the past. I'm going to say it again today on purpose. Now is not the time for you to give up. 
Now is, now is the time for you to get up in the mighty name of Jesus. He arose from the earth and then he washed himself. He anointed himself. He changed his clothes and he went to the house of the Lord and worship. I want to tell you something right now. Arise, get up from where you're at right now in Jesus' name. Not another day in despair, not another day in hopeless hopelessness, not another day overcome by depression and heaviness from the negative things that are going on around you and from the attack of the enemy. I came with a word from heaven for you today. Get up from where you're at in the name of Jesus. God is with you. He loves you. No weapon that's formed against you is going to be able to prosper. The enemy may have come in like a flood, but my God, I feel the anointing right now coming through to you right where you're at. The enemy may have come in like a flood, but the spirit of the Lord is going to raise a standard up against the enemy. And by the supernatural grace and mercy of God, you're going to be empowered to rise up from where you're at. Get up from where you are right now. Let the word of God, that the word of God that's even being spoken right now, let it just wash over you. Let the word of the living God wash away the pain. Wash yourself in his word right now. Let it wash away the heartache. Let it wash away the grief. Let it wash away the negativity. Let it wash away the bitterness in the name of Jesus and then receive an anointing. You know what it says in Psalm 23. He anoints our head with oil. God has a fresh anointing for your life right now. Your dream may have died, but God says that's not the end of the thing for you. There's a fresh anointing for you. David anointed himself. David knew how to encourage himself in the Lord his God. Anoint yourself right now and then change your clothes. He arose from the earth. He washed himself. He anointed himself and he changed his apparel. Can I tell you today, sometimes you've got to take off what you've got on for God to put on you what you've never had before. And I want to speak to you right now, no matter where you're at and what you're going through, the best is yet to come in your life today. God, that your greatest days are in front of you and not behind you. I came to prophesy over your life right now, all of your worst days are just stepping stones to your greatest days in the mighty name of Jesus. Put off those old, put off that sackcloth. Put off those, those old things that have been on you so that God can place upon you his supernatural anointing and cause you to walk in something that you've never had before. Then he went down to the house of the Lord and worshiped. I want to tell you, sometimes it's the, the hardest thing to do is to worship God and praise God in the middle of tremendous pain and heartache and grief. But you know what? Because David got up, he rose from the earth. Because he washed himself, anointed himself, changed his clothes, and went down to the house of the Lord to worship. The Bible says that when he came back from all that, oh my God, I feel faith right now. When he came back from all of that, it says he went into his wife Bathsheba and comforted her and knew her. And y'all know what that means. And she conceived a son. And the Bible says she gave birth to this baby boy and his name was Solomon and the Lord loved him. Can I tell you right now that Solomon, the product of a murderous adult, relationship was the greatest king that Israel ever knew. People want to talk about, well, he had 300 concubines and 700 wives. Yeah, but the kingdom peaked out under Solomon and he built the temple of the Lord God that stood for centuries. My friend, David's dreams died, but when David's dreams died, he dreamed another dream. And I want to challenge you right now, no matter where you're at or what you're going through, I don't care how dead the dream may seem to be. If your dream has died, let the anointing of the Holy Ghost come on you you right now and empower you and enable you to dream another dream. It's not over for you today. It's not over until God says it's over. He hasn't given up on you. I don't care what kind of mistakes you made. David was a murderer and an adulterer and God still blessed him because he was quick to repent and he humbled himself before the Lord. God brought a Solomon into his life and I want to tell you a thing right now. It doesn't matter what mistakes you made, how far you've fallen or the failures that you've been Endured. God says there's still a Solomon for you today. If your dreams have died, dream another dream. You're about to give birth to a miracle that's greater than anything you've ever experienced before. You're about to give birth to a miracle that's going to be a sign and a wonder for all to see. You're about to give birth to a miracle that's going to be a testimony for the glory of God of his faithfulness and supernatural power. Don't give up right now, my friend. Don't be overcome by the grief and discouragement, by the pain and the heartache that you may be enduring right now. If your dream has died, dream another dream in the name of Jesus. 
Let God give you a fresh vision right now. Let him give you a fresh dream right now. Let him reveal to you by the power of his spirit the great and mighty things that he has in store for your life. Your destiny in him is more awesome than you can even imagine. I want to pray for you right now. I know what it's like to have dreams die. I know what it's like to feel like there's no hope. I know what it's like to feel like there's no way forward. And you don't, you there, you seem like there is no light at the end of the tunnel. You don't know where to go or what to do. You feel like the pain that's in your heart and the pain that's surrounding you is going to destroy you. But I want to tell you right now, the devil is a liar. It's not over for you. Your best days and your blessed days are in front of you. And 